Short time ago, I spoke to author and journalist Michael Dobbs, who's currently a fellow at the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum. He covered the Bosnian War and has returned to the region to interview Mladic's victims. Today, he was inside the courtroom at The Hague. Michael Dobbs, welcome. So this all goes back many years now. You were in the courtroom today. What was it like? What was the atmosphere? Well, there were a lot of uh, spectators in the courtroom who had been victims of the war in uh, Bosnia. Uh, they were filling about half the courtroom. And uh, there was some back and forth, uh, not orally, but visually between them and Ratko Mladic. When Mladic came into the court, he waved at these spectators, did a thumbs up, uh, some of them waved back, uh, others uh, cursed him. Um, he seemed to relish being in the presence of uh, people who could be described as his victims. So take us back in time to what this is all about. I mean, this was a horrific war in so many ways. What made Srebrenica in particular stand out? Well, Srebrenica was the final episode in a horrific three-and-a-half-year war in Bosnia. Uh, in uh, Europe itself. Uh, Srebrenica was the worst massacre to occur in Europe since uh, World War II. People uh, had said after the Holocaust, never again, and here it was happening uh, on Europe's own doorstep, and the great powers uh, led by the United States were unable to do anything about it. At Srebrenica, it's now been established pretty conclusively that at least 7,000 Muslim prisoners were executed in cold blood by Mladic's forces, and another 1,000 uh, were killed in skirmishes as they tried to reach government-held territory to the north. Uh, after the massacre in Srebrenica, finally the West got its act together and uh, began the, what led to eventually to the Dayton peace negotiations. So this was the first big conflict after the end of the Cold War and for a long time, for three and a half years, uh, the United States and other Western governments proved inadequate to the challenge. So, uh, of course, this, tri this particular tribunal, I gather, was set up soon after the war, so long ago. Only now, in the last uh, years, are we getting to some of these very high players, high, high uh, generals and leaders. Why did it take so long? Well, actually, the uh, tribunal was set up during the war in what was interpreted then as a kind of token gesture uh, of solidarity with the victims. Uh, that's 20 years ago. And uh, it took them um, the best part of uh, two decades to bring the most high-profile uh, war criminals, including Mladic and the president of the uh, Bosnian Serb Republic, Radovan Karadzic, uh, to court. Um, for a long time, uh, Mladic uh, was, and Karadzic were wandering about Bosnia uh, in Belgrade, but nobody dared to go and arrest him. And it was only last year that Mladic was finally uh, arrested in his cousin's house in a remote uh, village in uh, northern Serbia and uh, transferred to The Hague. So I think at the beginning it was a lack of political will, and it's taken two decades to get over that. And then if you bring the story right up to today, we see these very different responses to Mladic. Uh, we see it in this tape of people reacting uh, very much for him, very much against him. So these divisions are still very much with us? Right. In one sense, uh, the war criminals won, in the sense that uh, Bosnia is a ethnically divided country now. And uh, I was there fairly recently. And you go to the Muslim side, and you, the Croat side, and the Serb side, and you get three different narratives of what happened. And we saw that reflected in the reaction to the trial today. Um, in the uh, Muslim side, of course, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, joy uh, that uh, Mladic has finally been brought to court. Uh, on the Serbian side, there's still a denial about the basic facts of uh, what happened at Srebrenica and in other parts of uh, Bosnia. And among many Serbs, uh, Mladic is still regarded as a hero, and he plays on that in his courtroom appearances. Finally, Michael, how, how will this trial proceed? How long is it supposed to last? Well, they think it's going to last about two years, which, believe it or not, is the fast track for the Yugoslav War Crimes Tribunal. 
Uh, they want at all costs to avoid what happened to, in the case of the former Yugoslav leader, uh, Slobodan Milosevic, who actually died while his trial was still going on. So there were, there were originally 196 charges, separate incidents against uh, Mladic, and they cut the indictment to 106 charges. So they've put him on the fast track, but he's not in good health. He suffered uh, several strokes while he was on the run. So it's anyone's guess whether he's actually going to last until the end of this trial. But today, at least, he was in pretty good. He seemed in pretty good health. All right, Michael Dobbs in The Hague. Thanks so much.